what is up everybody i hope you guys have been doing fantastic guess what we're doing a little update on my black friday snake that i got last year if you've looked at my previous video you'll see that i did an unboxing video for a lipstick sungo boa imperator and guess what it's been two months it's been a little bit of time i got a little busy with the holidays a few other things got a little sick yada yada and guess what we're finally getting to it so i want to share you with share him with you rather and also tell you about his name which i am so excited i have not talked about his name at all i've kept it a secret because i wanted to make a video about it so here we go today's the day i cannot wait give me one moment let me grab him and we will get going <laughs> all right everybody so i brought him out in a little travel container he is so friendly my god like if you watch the unboxing video of this guy you saw that he was not afraid at all he was just ready to go and you know what his personality has not changed a bit he's just amazing i love him so much all right buddy yeah you want to come out yes you do i know <laughs> so this is him now as for his name his name is lasso and I decided on this because I don't know, one day I was looking at him and he seemed like a little Western boy to me. And I was talking um, about him and he made like a little like kind of a lasso shape. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Lasso. And so, yeah, that's what I decided on for him. He's a little lasso. He's my little Western boy. He is doing absolutely crazy good. He has shed for me once. And it was a perfect shed, so his humidity is right. Now, he requires around a 60% humidity. And in Los Angeles, during the winter, it's a little easier to keep it up. But in the summer, it's definitely going to be a challenge. I've done it before. I do it with several of my other snakes. But um, it's always a little bit of a challenge with the humidity levels out here in the western states. But other than that, he's eating consistently. Now, there was about a week where I couldn't get feeders for him because I don't know if you're dealing with this by you, but we're having some supply issues in Los Angeles with feeders and shipping issues and all that. So I wasn't able to get any. And um, he dealt with it like a champ. Never was angry. He kept looking in his cage, looking all over for him. Like, where's my rat? Like, lady, get together. So, but we're all good now. I got extra for him. He's on small mice right now. So he probably will stay that way, I'd say, for another few months. Um, I could bump him up, but I'm kind of more in the philosophy of having a snake eat smaller and more frequently than eating a larger feeder and eating less frequently. I just think it's better for them, better for, the, their, better for their digestion, and better for their health overall. Um, it's just too taxing on their systems. You know, think if we ate a huge meal and then we only ate like maybe once a day, that's, that's tough on our bodies. Right. And I just like to live by that philosophy. But other than that, he's doing, you know, great. Other than the week where we can get feeders, he's just, ah, come on, buddy. I know, I know you want to come this way. I try to show you his, uh, head stamp because it's a really cool head stamp. I showed this in the unboxing video, but it's a little line down the middle and, uh, there we go. Yeah. It's a little line down the middle and it's pretty much like crazy perfect i mean it's pretty incredible it's pretty much exactly spot on um you know in terms of the way it's placed and the sizing on either side of his head like it's not um it doesn't look weird at all it looks really neat so he's doing great but he's very active he's extremely active he does like to hide a lot um when i have him out he just comes to life it's amazing he goes from like no nah, i'm in my cave to uh, just wanting to be everywhere. Oh, and by the way, it was so funny. So when I first got him and put him in his closure for about a week there, he would not go in his hide. He just like sat on top of his hide. And I'm like, what are you doing, boy? And I wasn't sure. I guess he didn't have a hide from his breeder because I had to physically show it to him. Like I had to like kind of force his head into the hide. And then he like looked around he's like, oh man. And he like went straight in <laughs> and he's been in there ever since. He absolutely adores it. Oop, sorry, buddy. But yeah, he has his nice peat mat in there. He gets up really warm. He does come out to explore. I keep his, um, to keep his humidity up, I do keep his bowl next to his hide around where the heat mat is so that it kind of creates a more human environment. I love that over like constantly misting. Of course I mist, but not misting as frequently because it just gives a natural and, um, helps to where they're not in like, you know, a, a totally wet environment all the time. 
I think that can be, you know, boas are sometimes susceptible to getting mouth rot and things like that. And having too wet an environment, like physical moisture sitting in their enclosure. I just think that's like, you know, not the best thing for them. So as long as the humidity is up, it's good. But everything's going great with this guy. He is just an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait till he gets big. Now, on my Instagram, someone posted that I was, when I first introduced him on there, someone posted that, you know, there's got around eight feet long. And if mine gets eight feet long, because it is a boy, so he's going to be smaller than a female. But if it gets around eight feet long, I will be so excited because that's exactly what I want. I want something that is manageable, but not too large to where I have like a reticulated python size and it just keeps growing and growing. And I don't want that. You know, I think they're amazing snakes. They're beautiful. Like they're absolutely incredible. I look at them at shows and it's hard to walk away and not get one because they're so small and pretty. But when they get big, it's just, you know, my whole thing is I want to provide a great environment for my animals and I want to provide the right size enclosures. Um, even some of my enclosures now, I feel like I want, I want them bigger for the um, animals, but I provide a lot of outside time for them. Um, Zoe, wherever the heck she is right now, she free roaming, she free roams constantly. With her specifically, actually, I used to get, um, and a lot of tegu owners know this, so Zoe the tegu, by the way, yeah, um, but a lot of tegu owners know this, is that they bump their nose when they're trying to like, get out of the cage, because they're so energetic, because they need such a large space and a large enclosure, and so they constantly have this like nose rub going on, and since I've done that, since I've done the whole free-ranging thing, I haven't had a moment where she gets the nose issue. She's happy as hell. She's actually lazy now. Like, it's like, I give you a good place to go. I give you a place to like run around and now you just sleep in the corner all day. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, come on, girl. She just, she knows how to work the system. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't, you know, getting a reticulated python, unless I have like this giant enclosure, which would be a custom enclosure. And I just, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to provide a snake you know, not as large of an enclosure as it needs. There's a few reptile um, shops I go to around here in Los Angeles where they have these giant bear mees and reticulated pythons in these tiny little cages. And it's like, dude, no, like, I don't want to do that. So I'm all about giving them a good life. So this guy, he's a manageable size. He's still going he's still gonna to need a rather like huge enclosure when he gets bigger, but it's nothing that's going to be like you know, ginormous to where it's like, why not just give him a huge like bedroom <laughs> to himself, you know? So yeah, but this is him. He's doing great. Um, I am going to be updating you guys on his enclosure. Unfortunately, the enclosure has been a pain in my butt. <laughs> I keep trying to get done. And the silicone that came with like the mushroom ledges, it was, I guess it was the wrong silicone because it did not stay on. It was weird. It smelled like chocolate too. And it looked like chocolate. I kept thinking, is this Nutella? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea, but it wasn't the right stuff. It was something, chocolate, Nutella, something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so I'm getting the right silicone for that. And I'm going to start getting those together. Right now, he has a nice layer of um, just, uh, he has the hide. He has the, the bark, like in here. And he has a stick and some fake plants and everything like that. So he's doing great. He has his bowl, everything. And um, it's just not as pretty as I wanted, wanted it to be. I wanted to have more ledges, more space to go high in. Um, he likes doing that. He likes kind of looking up. So I want to give him some additional space to go higher. And that's going to be what the mushroom ledges are for. So once those are done, I'll totally do a cage tour and I'll show you where he's living and how he's living and how he's living the good life. Right, buddy? But yeah, so thank you guys for checking in on him. And um, yeah, and fe feel free to um, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking of him, how much, how you like him. He is going to get a little bit more yellow and um, he's going to be gorgeous. I'm so excited with how he looks. So I cannot wait to watch him grow, wait to watch him mature. And um, yeah, I'll be doing updates with him as he gets bigger too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, follow me on Instagram. If you would like to see more updates or pictures that you want to get to know me more, also you can message me on there and I love helping everybody with their care questions. And um, yeah. So talk to you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>